If I asked you to rate how well you think you're doing in life, what criteria would you use? How happy you are in life? How happy you can help others be? How many friends you have? Maybe how fit or good looking you think you are? Or how much money you earn? The dominant criterion that policymakers use to measure country performance is GDP or gross domestic product. GDP. 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 Economic growth. Productivity. Economic growth. Gross domestic product. GDP measures the market value of all the goods and services that are bought in an economy for a given year. It doesn't matter whether those goods and services come from things that damage your health, that damage the environment, or even sometimes whether those things are even legal. We value what we measure, and currently what we're measuring according to GDP is leading us astray. David Pulling, author of The Growth Delusion, has this example. Breast milk values nothing, and yet uh, powdered milk, which we know in certain circumstances can be quite damaging, especially in the developing world if it's mixed with bad water, but that is, has an economic value. Now, does that set these invisible economic incentives? It's quite hard to prove, but intuitively you might think, yes, it does. So what are the origins of GDP? GDP was developed in the US and the UK as a response to the Great Depression in the 1930s, as a way to keep track of what the country was producing. Even from the beginning, one of the key creators of GDP, Simon Kuznets, argued that it wasn't a particularly good measure of social progress or even economic welfare. Kennedy actually once put it. It measures everything in short, except that which makes life worthwhile. It measures economic value no matter how it's distributed in the economy. Over the previous decade or so, we've seen more and more of that value going towards the very top of the income distribution so that those in the rest of the income distribution don't see those benefits. But that isn't reflected in measures of GDP growth. We're chasing after economic value, no matter whether it's good or bad for society. And what about the things that are valuable to us, but that aren't bought and sold in the market? Take, for example, a teacher and a financial trader. According to the market, the teacher is valued much lower in terms of the teacher's salary than the financial trader. But in terms of actual social value creation, what the teacher is doing has so much more social value in terms of the students that will go on to earn livings and to help other people, compared to the financial trader who is redistributing value between himself and other traders. We now live, particularly in advanced economies, in, a, in very much in a service economy. A sort of normal measure of national accounting, of judging how well our economy is doing, is very poor at grasping quality, um, which is really the essence of services. You know, GDP is terrible at haircuts and it's terrible at landscape gardening. It's very good at steel and bricks. When you move into the internet age, as you move from analog to digital, GDP kind of almost collapses because, you know, you have things that were part of the economy, things like booking a flight that you used to pay somebody for. They used to have a job that was registered as GDP. Now you do it yourself. And so something that used to be part of the economy is now out of the economy. The good news is there is a community of people developing alternative measures in an attempt to address the shortcomings of GDP. Probably the first such measure that was proposed was the United Nations Development Programme's Human Development Index. This looks not just at monetary incomes, but also looks at the health of a society and at the education of society. Another measure which has been proposed is the Genuine Progress Indicator. It nets out social ills like crime and environmental damage and incorporates things like volunteering or household production. Another direction that social progress measures have gone is in terms of subjective well-being or life satisfaction. So directly asking people, how satisfied are you with life? What needs to happen is for politicians and policymakers to take these seriously and to invest their energies into developing a framework where these other measures can flourish. <laughs>